Hello children. I hope you have understood very well part 1 of our unit 2. In this section, in this video lecture, we will learn part 2 of our chapter The Sound of Music. That is our part 2 is The Shahinai of Bismillah Khan. In part 1 we have seen the story of Evelyn Rennie. Now we will see the story of Bismillah Khan. As you know very well, this lesson has been divided into two parts. Both are associated with the subject of music and the personalities who made music their life. In this second part, we come to know about Bismillah Khan. A Shahnai maestro who has achieved excellence in the field of Shahnai playing. He was awarded Bharat Ratna in 2001 in recognition of his contribution in the field of music. Both Evelyn Glenny and Ustad Bismillah Khan are inspiring musicians who have motivated many people. Uh, let's know more about the characters of this story. Here in this part 2, main characters are Aurangzeb, a Mughal emperor who banned the playing of Pungi in the royal court, Bismillah Khan, the legendary Shahnai player who brought this instrument to the front of the world, Rasul Baks Khan, the grandfather of the great Bismillah Khan, Pegambar Baks, the father of Bismillah Khan, Ali Baks. Maternal uncle of Bismillah Khan. Let's know more about our great artist, great person, Ustad Bismillah Khan. He was born on 21st March 1916 and died on 21st August 2006. His original name was Kamruddin Khan, often referred to to buy the little Ustad. He was an Indian musician credited with popularizing the Shahnai, a double reed wind instrument. While the Shahnai had long held importance as a folk instrument played primarily in traditional ceremonies, Khan is credited with elevating its status and bringing it to the concert stage. He was awarded India's highest civilian honor, the Bharat Ratna, in 2001, becoming the third classical musician after M.S. Subalakshmi and Ravi Shankar to be awarded Bharat Ratna. Let's start. Explanation with summary of the chapter. Here for you, few lines, beginning of the chapter is here before you read. Children, do you know these people? What instruments do they play? Here, first is Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasya playing instrument flute. Second is Ustad Vilayat Khan playing sitar. Third, M. Lalita and M. Nandini playing violin. Fourth, Ustad Zakir Hussain playing tabla. Fifth, Ustad Amjad Ali Khan playing Sarod. Sixth, Maestro Kunnakudi Vaidinathan playing violin. Seventh, Ustad Sultan Khan playing Sarangi. And last is our Ustad Bismillah Khan playing Shehnai. Think of the Shehnai and the first thing. You will probably imagine is a wedding or a similar occasion or function. The next would probably be Ustad Bismillah Khan, the Shahnai Maestro playing this instrument. He was the winner of Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian award of India. He performed not only in India but abroad too. 
This part of the lesson throws light on the origin of the Shehnai and the contributions of Ustad Bismillah Khan to bring this musical instrument onto the classical stage. Famous Mughal ruler, Emperor Aurangzeb prohibited playing of a musical instrument called Pungi in the royal residence. Pungi was a wind instrument, the predecessor of the Shehnai. Aurangzeb felt that it had a very sharp and unpleasant sound. Pungi is made with reeds which used wind to produce sound. No one had thought one day such noise making instrument would be rescued, played and liked by the audience. A barber of a family of professional musicians decided to improve the tonal quality of Pungi. He played the improved instrument before royalty. This barber took a pipe with hollow stem, was longer and broader than Pungi. He made seven holes on the body of the pipe. When he blew air into the pipe and closed and opened different holes, he found that soft and melodious sounds were produced. He played the improved instrument in the royal court. Everyone was impressed. They liked the sound produced by it. The royal court thought that this instrument was different from the pungi and so it should have different name also. There is a story behind the name. The Mughals were called Shah, especially King, and Nai is an Indian name used for the barber. Since it was first time played in the Shah's chamber and played by a Nai barber, so the instrument was called the Sheh Nai. The first part is Sheh, which stands for Shah, and the second part Nai, that is barber. Here in this para, the writer showed us the birth of new musical instrument, Shehnai. How the barber's family worked on the basic structure of Pungi and gave new birth to a same kind of instrument which was liked and appreciated by everyone and secured special place in the royal court. The sound of the Shehnai began to be considered auspicious and for this reason it is still played in temples and an important part of any North Indian wedding. In the past, the Shehnai was a part of the Nobat. Nobat means a traditional group of nine musical instruments. These instruments played at the royal court and Shehnai was also a part of Nobat. Initially, it was a part of royal court and temples. Gradually, it was used on stage performances and credit for that goes to Ustad Bismillah Khan. He was a legendary Shehnai player and everyone wished to hear him to play the Shehnai. The instrument which was disrespectful before. Gradually, it was considered as omen, as blessed, you can say. To hear the sound of Shehnai is counted as encouraging and favorable. It has taken respectable place in temple, royal court, and especially in wedding ceremonies. But Ustad Bismillah Khan is a person who made this sound famous and renowned amongst all. When Bismillah Khan was five years old, he lived in Dumrao in Bihar and played Gili Danda near a pond. He used to visit nearby Bihariji temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita. Every day he got laddu of 1.25 kg 
at the end of the recitation of the song as a prize by the local maharaja this incident happened 80 years ago when bismillah khan was 5 years old after 80 years he had received the most prestigious civilian award of india the bharat ratna bismillah khan was born on 21st march 1916 in a family of musicians in bihar he acquired the skill of playing the shehnai from his ancestors his grandfather rasul baks khan was a great shehnai player in the court of the bhojpuri king his father Begumbar Bucks and other parental ancestors were also great Chennai players. The boy whose fathers and forefathers were also great Chennai players got the lessons of music in his genes. From his early childhood he earned rewards and acknowledgement from the nobles. The same repeated after 80 years when he was awarded with the most prestigious civilian award the bharat ratna bismillah khan was born in a legendary family whose ancestors were already known and acknowledged for shehnai playing as a child it was natural for this little boy to get attracted for it the art of playing shehnai was in his blood bismillah khan started learning music at an early age when he was just 3 years old his mother once took him to banaras to his maternal uncle's house he was fascinated at watching his uncle's practice the shehnai he was attracted towards it and he also wanted to learn playing it He started going with his uncle Ali Baks who was on a duty to play shehnai at the Vishnu temple of Banaras. He slowly started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day. He never got tired. He was so captivated by the shehnai. He stayed for many years in Banaras. He used to practice at the temple of Balaji and Mangal la Maya The banks of the Ganga had attracted this young trainee to sit there and practice in solitude for as many hours he wished This flowing water of Ganga motivated and inspired him to invent many ragas which were considered impossible to be produced by a shehnai As a child Bismillah Khan was attracted towards the peaceful sound of shehnai and like an ardent devotee he started his journey with his maternal uncle he chose motivational place for him to do riyaz and there he was too much engrossed always with his practices that time had no bound on him the inspirational place the bank of ganga even motivated him to play impossible ragas on shehnai and that helped him to establish himself as a profound when bismillah khan was 14 years old he accompanied his uncle ali baks to the allahabad music conference Ustad Fayyaz Khan renowned classical vocalist appreciated him for his performance and advised him if he would work hard same as he would make a name in the field of music Bismillah Khan got a big break of his life with the opening of the All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938 He soon became an often heard shehnai player on radio he was the lucky first indian to greet the entire nation through his shehnai on the auspicious occasion of independence on 15th august 1947 he played the rag kafi from the red fort on this memorable day 
for an audience after his performance the first prime minister of india pandit jawahar lal nehru gave his famous speech trust with destiny in his teenage bismillah khan's performance earned acknowledgement from the renowned vocalist he showed us his hard work and passion for the music it was his life since childhood only became successful and very fruitful because he was doing a lot practice and riyas in the year 1938 he became lucky enough bismillah khan got a big break of his life through all india radio his programs had been trans telecasted frequently in lucknow but a proudful moment still awaited for him his optimistic promising hope and hopeful sound of shehnai was heard by all indians on the auspicious day of 15th august 1947 from the red fort he was the fortunate one who greeted indians a proud full moment with chennai and after his performance only our first prime minister delivered his speech for the nation Bismillah Khan gave many concerts both in India and abroad too. He first visited Afghanistan where King Zaheer Shah acknowledged him with his priceless Persian carpets and the other souvenirs for his remarkable performance. Not only king of Afghanistan but also film director Vijay Bhatt was fascinated with bismillah's music he was so impressed after hearing him play at a festival that he named a film after the instrument called gunj uthi shehnai the song dil ka khilona hai toot gaya composed by bismillah khan in the film became nationwide super hit and it broke all records Although he got remarkable success in the film through this chart buster he composed music only for two films Gunjuti Shehnai made by Vijay Bhatt and a Kannada movie Sanadi Aparna made by Vikram Srinivas He stated that he did not like the artificial world of films and the glamour that was there in the film world that was why he did not compose music for many movies his live concerts and performances were acknowledged and appreciated all around the world his first international performance was a sweet memory for him precious gifts by king of afghanistan encouraged him and made it the memorable one his Shehnai was also liked by two filmmakers and one of them made the film based on his story as a film music composer he did not wish to groom himself so he limited himself only for two movies Bismillah Khan got a lot of recognition and was honored with awards. He became the first Indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious Lincoln Center Hall in the United States of America. He even performed at Montreal, Australia in the World Exposition. He gave his performance at the Cannes Art Festival and in Japan at Osaka Trade Fair. He became so famous all over the world that in Tehran an auditorium had been named after him 
Ustad Bismillah Khan had been awarded with national awards like the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan and the Padma Vibhushan. Many awards, recognition and performances at world level had earned a name and a fame. The people of Tehran acknowledged his talent and abilities and named an auditorium after him. He had been awarded with the most prestigious awards of our country like the Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan and the Padma Vibhushan. When Ustad Bismillah Khan received India's highest civilian award Bharat Ratna in the year 2001. He kept the most desired award on his chest and with shining eyes and happiness, he gave an important message to the country. He told all the Indians to teach music to their children because music is the richest tradition of India. He said that even the western countries wanted to learn India's music. After receiving the most prestigious award of the country, he was very happy because his hard work had been recognized. With that, he informed everyone to teach this blissful traditional Indian music to their children. Despite travelling to many countries, he was exceedingly fond of Banaras and Dumrao and they remain for him the most wonderful towns of the world. Once an American student offered him to start a school in USA and promised Ustadji to recreate the temples in America if he missed it too much. He asked his student if he would be able to transport the river Ganga also to America. He shared his feelings and said that whenever he visited any foreign country, he longed to see and return to India. When he was in Mumbai, he yearned to visit Banaras and the Ghats of Ganga. And when he was in Banaras, he missed his birthplace, Dumrao, and its unique mutt where he sang Chaita. He travelled all over the world, though he had given so much respect and recognition to his roots. He even refused a position in America, saying that he cannot find the Ganga there. Whenever he was travelling abroad, his heart kept aching for his homeland. Here is the excerpt from the interview which was printed in the issue of October 2005 of Reader's Digest. The reporter asked the Bismillah Khan if he and his family had ever thought to shift to Pakistan at the time of partition. At that time he lightly replied him that God forbid him if he ever thought to leave Banaras. He confirmed even he never thought of it. He shared his experience once he visited Pakistan for the concert only for an hour. There he greeted Namaskar to the Pakistanis and Salam Alaikum to the Indians. These few lines of his interview shows us that he loved his motherland a lot. He had a great bond and love for his country. Here in this para, the writer said that Ustad Bismillah Khan was a perfect example of rich cultural heritage of India. 
His work was beyond the religion barriers. Although he was a strict Muslim, he followed the Muslim laws, but every morning he would play the Shainai at the Kashi Vishwanath temple, which was a Hindu temple. This shows us that he did not have the barriers of religion in his mind. He was a true Indian. He considered music to be India's richest cultural heritage. Ustad Bismillah Khan had been ill for a long time and he died on 21st August 2006 at the age of 90. The entire country mourned the death of the legendary musician. There was a holiday for one day and he was given a state funeral. Bismillah Khan is a true example of secular Indian as being a Muslim. He played the Shahnai at the Kashi Vishwanath temple. For him, music was above all religions. As a true nation lover, he considered music as the richest heritage of culture. India had lost the swell of music on 21st August 2006. He was 90 years old. The whole country was said and one day holiday was observed after this legendary musician. He is always in our hearts and his shahnai and ragas are an inseparable part of an any auspicious occasion of our life. Children, for your reference, I have given you all the textual questions which you have to copy in your notebook. Learn well and then you write it down in your notebook. You have to write meanings also in your notebook. Write both the things and complete your notebooks. Thank you.